Oh, snap. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the, the live today. We are live. We are currently doing the Song Theory Podcast, and I'm so excited to be here. And today, we have a few subjects we're talking about. Today, we're talking about uh, some Christmas song theories. First of all, we got to talk about some Christmas song theories. Um, we also are looking at how some of these Christmas songs have been uh, messed up over time and how some of them have really been tricking us into believing that they're nice and kind when they're not. Uh, also, we'll be looking into uh, why rappers have been getting killed. We're talking about the eternal artist today. What is the eternal artist? Why is that a thing? Uh, and also, we'll be talking about Kanye West and the recent comments from him. Uh, and so, you know, I am on Twitch, actually. I'm actually live on Twitch as well. Uh, I am currently also streaming on TikTok, so I got a whole audience of people watching. I got a whole lot going on, and so I'm trying to make sure to manage it as well as I can. So uh, if you're on the podcast, you'll probably you know listen to me going back and forth between uh, people on Twitch, people on TikTok, uh, but I will be answering questions as well live, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I also, at the end of all of this, I will be asking you guys questions at the end of the podcast and you guys can actually join the live if you're watching live. So that's really exciting. And uh, I'm happy. And in fact, you know, because we're doing the song theory thing today, it's time. I got to put on the tinfoil hat, man. You know, you're not a good conspiracy theorist if you don't have the tinfoil hat. Okay? You got to have it on. I know a lot of people were asking me the other day. They're like, why do you have that? What's going on? Listen, the tinfoil hat is everything. You got to have the tinfoil hat. Okay? Now, this isn't a very good one. I need to get a better one than this. Uh, but this this will have to do for now. This actually looks like a tinfoil, uh, like, <laughs> like a really bad tinfoil uh, uh, beanie. But you know what? I got to make myself a new one. Hello, hello. Welcome, guys. We're doing the podcast right now. We are currently recording the podcast. So welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here. Make sure you share the live. Share this live. We are recording the podcast. I'm also on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash The Song Theory. So make sure you join there as well. What's up, everybody? Queen Snuggles. Yes, you are finally seeing the stream. Welcome. Right now, uh, today, I am on stream. I am recording a podcast. I am recording a podcast right now. This is happening. This is the official Song Theory podcast. So if you guys want to watch this podcast, you guys can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Song Theory. Go subscribe to the Song Theory YouTube channel. It's really important that you do that because I'm trying to transition from TikTok. I'm trying to have all of this happening outside of TikTok, guys. So today, again, we're talking about Christmas song theories. We have a lot of song theories regarding Christmas. Guys, it's December. We got to talk about the Christmas song theories. I'm not going to go without doing that. So we got to do that today. All right. Then we're also talking about why rappers are getting killed so fast. Why are they getting killed like this? What's going on? Why is this happening? And I have a lot of theories behind that, actually. A lot of them. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about Kanye West and his recent comments. It's getting hot. I really think his time is up. I think it's over for him. And uh, we got to talk about that as well. We have to talk about it, okay? So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And here we go. Uh, so let's talk about some Christmas song theories, okay? Now, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Christmas songs like Jingle Bells and, you know, Sleigh Bells Ring. And I'm sure you even know, uh, you know, like, uh, what, what's some, what are some other songs, right? I mean, how many are there? There's a million of them, right? All I Want for Christmas is You from Mariah Carey. You guys know all of them, right? But we have a few songs that I think we need to take a look at and we need to talk about just for a second, okay? We need to do it because I think there's a lot of disconnect happening and it's making me upset. I think we need to make sure to talk about this, okay? So the first song we're talking about today is I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. Have you guys heard this song before? I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, okay? So this theory right here, I, I believe this is, this song is about adultery. I think this song is straight up about a woman who cheated on her husband. And their son walked in on it. Now, a lot of you may recognize the lyrics from this. Um, I want to make sure to look it up so that we all can see it. So let me see real quick. All right. So I saw, I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Okay. So 
the I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus is interesting because when I first read these lyrics, first of all, these are all the way back from the Jackson 5 era, okay? This was all the way back. For, oh, the, I'm sorry. I took off the hat. I shouldn't have taken off the hat. I'm sorry. I'll put it back on in a second. It's just, a, I, I got to get a new one. That's what's going on here. It doesn't look very good. I got to get a new temple hat. Um, I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. You know, and, and the, the, the way I would start this theory off is by saying, okay, is this Christmas song about adultery? This theory says yes. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus is straight up about adultery. I don't know how anybody can look at this song, read the lyrics, and not recognize what it is that the young Michael Jackson saw that day underneath the Christmas tree. Now, this song was written some time ago. I, I don't believe it was written in the time of um, Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5. I think it was written well before that okay but it's important to talk about because the lyrics are um extremely problematic okay so let, let's start off with the first few lyrics wow mommy's kissing santa claus now firstly this sounds normal right most of us are thinking well santa claus is probably his dad santa claus is probably like you know his father trying to sneak some stuff under the tree all right we can assume that no, we can assume that but let's keep reading the lyrics okay I saw, kiss, I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus underneath the mistletoe last night. She didn't see me creep down the stairs to have a peep. So she wasn't even paying attention. She wasn't even paying attention. Okay. She thought I was tucked up in my bedroom fast asleep. Then I saw mommy tickle Santa Claus, tickle, tickle Santa Claus underneath his beard so snowy white. Oh, what a laugh it would have been if daddy had only seen. Ooh. See, this is, okay, okay. Now, again, this might sound strange to a lot of you, but this is why I think that this is not his father. Now, remember, this is a theory. Obviously, this, it could, it could be his dad. We don't know. But the reason why I don't believe this is his father is because when you read the lyrics where he says, if daddy had only seen mommy kissing Santa Claus last night, this child is old enough to recognize what their father looks like, I'm sure. I'm sure this child is old enough to recognize uh, what their father looks like and you know whether or not their father is present, whether or not their father is, is able to, to identify with, with his mother, right? If you were to see a guy dressed as Santa Claus, came downstairs, Playing with your mama, I'm sure at some point you would be like, oh, that's just dad. Dressed up as Santa Claus. Because remember, in this song, Michael Jackson is black. Michael Jackson is black. So you would look at Santa Claus and go, oh, that's a black Santa Claus. That must be my dad. But in the song, he, he's making it pretty clear that this is not his father. He's making it pretty clear that this is not my dad. Okay. Then he goes on to say, he saw mommy kissing Santa. Little Michael Jackson said that his father saw his mother kissing Santa. That's adultery. Straight up. I, I don't know how you could look at that and be like, oh, no, it's, it's all good. That's totally normal. That happens all the time. Yeah, I've seen my mom kiss uh, Santa Claus before uh, without my dad's knowledge. That's totally normal. Yeah, I had this guy come in just the other day and, um, you know, he just walked in and gave my mom a big old kiss right on the mouth. That's totally normal. My dad had no idea until he saw it, of course, and then he was cool with it. No, no, that doesn't happen. This boy literally was exposed to his mother cheating on his father with a man who may have been Santa Claus. Like, like, like think about what I'm saying right now. Was the man who was kissing his mother actually Santa Claus? We don't know. We have no idea. But let, let's keep reading. I mean, the lyrics are right here. He saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. I did. I really did see mommy kissing Santa Claus. And I'm going to tell my dad. Then I saw mommy tickle Santa Claus underneath his beard. And then it goes on again. He claims, he's exclaiming, I saw 
this guy, Santa Claus, kissing my mother, and it wasn't my father. Now, I don't know what you're into when it comes to Christmas songs, but I prefer my Christmas songs not to have adultery laced in them. I like to have my Christmas songs clean and fun and, and talking about things that aren't adultery or imagining my wife getting banged by Santa Claus. Doesn't Santa Claus have a wife? Doesn't he have some elf kids to take care of? Why is he banging some dude's mom in the middle of their living room? This to me is obviously adultery. Now, again, reading the rest of the lyrics, it goes on, it ends the song. I did, I did, I really did see mommy kissing Santa Claus. You gotta believe me, you just gotta believe me. Come on, fellas, believe me, you just gotta believe me. He's trying to convince somebody, maybe his brothers, maybe his friends, that he indeed saw his mom kissing Santa Claus. Now, I have seen other songs that are relative to Santa cheating on Mrs. Claus. And quite frankly, I'm disappointed. If you think of the other songs, like just real quick, think of some other songs that you've heard before regarding Santa, regarding his behavior, right? Regarding some of the things that he's done in the past. I'm sure you recognize that Santa Claus has a behavioral track here of cheating on Mrs. Claus. And, I, and quite frankly, I'm disappointed. <clears throat> quite frankly, <clears throat> I am disappointed in Santa Claus because then you have, uh, what, what's that one song? Um, uh, Santa Baby. Did we forget about Santa Baby? <laughs> Did we forget about a woman who literally is treating Santa Claus as if he is some type of sugar daddy? Did we forget about that? I, I remember that. I remember reading the lyrics to Santa Baby and realizing that Santa Claus is a rolling stone and he's been cheating on Mrs. Claus for centuries. I mean, going home to home, laying down pipe on every woman who's just trying to give her child a good Christmas. Quite frankly, I'm appalled. So again, I mean, that's just a theory for this song. I mean, we don't know if it's true or not. But uh, if it is true, if this theory holds any type of water, any type of weight, if you heard these lyrics and you're still like, oh, this is normal, then you're not normal and you're cool with adultery. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's it. That's all I can say about that. I don't know what you got going on. But th this is disturbing. Okay? I mean, and that's, and, that's, and that's not it. Honestly, you have other songs, right? So, for example, we have uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. All right. Hey, what's going on? Hey, so right now I'm actually filming a podcast. I'm doing a podcast right now and uh, I'm, I'm filming it. I got the microphone here and everything. So if you're interested in watching the podcast, go subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash song theory. Uh, and this podcast will be on there and I'm doing a weekly podcast. Now, TikTok doesn't like me doing this because I only have seven people in here. Uh, so this obviously isn't something that TikTok wants me to do because they don't want me going outside the algorithm. They don't want me going outside of TikTok, right? So me making a podcast right now, they really don't like. So if you enjoy this though, and you want to see this podcast, go subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the best way to see it. And right now we're talking about Christmas song theories. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. Christmas song theories. So we're now talking about Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. By the way, also sang by the Jackson 5. Is Santa Claus coming to town about Santa Claus being some type of God? Like, if you read the lyrics, and again, we'll read all these lyrics. We'll read all these lyrics. But if you really read these lyrics, Santa sounds like some type of like godlike creature. Queen Snuggle said, imagine if Santa is a real uncle or family friend dressed as Santa. Probably. That's probably exactly what happened. It's nasty. They nasty. Okay. So check this out. Does this Christmas song paint Santa Claus as some type of godlike creature? This theory says yes. Because if you look at the lyrics of Santa Claus is coming to town, which we'll do right now. Here we go. So let, let's let's look at those lyrics, all right? Santa Claus is coming to town. Because I think people seem to have forgotten how uh, weird these lyrics are. So real quick, 
I'm going to read the Michael Buble version. There's a lot of versions of Santa Claus that's coming to town, like a lot of them. So I, I'm personally not going to go through like every single one of them because it, there's a lot. So just listening to the version that Michael Buble did, which, by the way, most of the lyrics are pretty relative. They're all pretty much the same. Here are the lyrics. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Does that not sound like a threat? Does, does that not sound like a threat to somebody? That sounds like a major threat to me. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You better not cry. You better not pout, bro. You know what I'm saying? You better not do it. I'm going to tell you why. Because Santa Claus, Santa Claus is coming for you. You understand me? And if you're not good, that man going to rip you in half. That's what that sounds. It sounds like a threat. Which, which are, are we going to act like it's not? Like, this song was designed to threaten children into being good noodles, right? This song was designed to, to threaten children to be their best so that they don't get in trouble. You know, for Christmas and all that. You better not cry. Like, excuse me. What, what type of, what is this? Uh, you know, I'm out here trying to get presents. I just want to get the new Game Boy. Me, my little, my little boy self. I'm hearing this song. Like, I'm getting, I'm about to get beat up. I cry one time, it's a wrap, that's it? I get cold in my stocking? No, that's outrageous. So let's look at the rest of it. Because at this point, as the song goes on, you begin to hear that Santa Claus starts to sound like some type of godlike creature. Like he's omnipotent, omnipresent, and he's like, he's all powerful. Listen to this. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out if you're naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. That doesn't sound threatening to anybody. That doesn't sound like a gangster who's trying to extort you for money and, and trying to protect you from the local gangs. That doesn't sound like he's coming by to beat you up if you don't give him his money. It's, what do we, like, li, who wrote this song? I'll look it up, but like, this is, this is creepy. Wait, wait, wait. This part of the song is the worst, okay? When I was a child and I heard this part of the song, I pretty much wept. That was the moment I cried. Because I'm thinking to myself, so Santa Claus sees everything. He's God. Santa Claus is a God. And he sees everything I do. He sees when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. No, 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 no. Come on. Like, be honest. Like, be honest with me. You hear that. You hear these lyrics. And you're not thinking to yourself, Santa Claus is all powerful. He can see when I'm sleeping. He can see when I'm awake. He knows if I've been bad or good. Who's reporting this to him? Is there some type of complaint line that he's connected to? Do my parents have his direct email letting him know that I've been bad? I've been good? Does he have access to my report cards? What about my permanent record? What does that sound like to y'all? Santa Claus is some type of God, period. He has to be. I mean, the fact that he delivers presents in a 24-hour period all around the world to every child, obviously he's some type of magical being, right? But the fact that he knows everything about me, it goes too far. And then the, so be good for goodness sake. So be good for goodness sake. Like, you're threatening me. I don't appreciate that. I'd rather, I would rather get cold than to try to please some fat man in a red suit chilling in the North Pole, making sure that he doesn't come and spank me because I've been a bad boy. Uh, no thanks. Hey, can you wish me uh, that I have good luck? I have a concert tomorrow. I'm scared. Yeah, good luck, man. You got this. You definitely got it. So let's continue on with the lyrics. Oh, wait, that's right. It's all the same lyrics. The rest of the song. It's just that. It's just them threatening you. That when, I, I can't believe, and I've talked to people about this song. I still can't believe people have listened to this song. And they actually believe that this is a nice song to play during Christmas time. This song is tragic. This is a tragedy. The fact that you are threatening me, any child, you're threatening every child in existence who believes in a Santa Claus. 
And you're like, if, if you don't do right, then you're going to get it. You're going to, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Like, what does that even mean? What happens? I think what scares me the most about this song is there isn't actually any, there isn't actually any real, like, what is the consequence? What happens if I don't do right? They don't talk about a lump of coal. They don't talk about you not getting presents. They just say, be good for goodness sake. That's frightening. They should play this song around Halloween time. That's what I think. This is a good song, but the lyrics are questionable. I can't even say the song is good if the lyrics are questionable. The lyrics is like most of the song. It, it all has to be put together. It, it all has to come together. I, the, you know, like I can't listen to a song and the lyrics are horrible. And they're like, you know, yo, I'm, I'm going to kill your mom and eat your dog. Like the beat could be great, but like that is a horrible song to listen to. This is a, it, I, listen, whether or not you believe this song is like creepy and they're somehow worshiping Santa Claus as some type of deity, that's up to you. But I listen to this and that's just, that's how I feel. So that's, that's just me. I don't know about y'all, but that's me. That's just me. I don't know how to feel about it. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of Christmas songs. I mean, there is a lot of Christmas songs that sound like that. There's a lot of Christmas songs that make you really freak the heck out and go, what did I just listen to? What the heck was that? And that that's not it. That really isn't it. There's actually another one that's like really, really sad. It's really sad. And, and we'll get into it in a second. Because the... The Christmas song that I'm familiar with that I know really well is uh, Walking in a Winter Wonderland. I've heard that song so many times in, in on radio, in the stores, and people love playing it. But it's actually one of the saddest Christmas songs to ever exist. It just is. And we got to talk about that. We got to talk about it. So real quick, guys, let's take a break. I just want to let you know that this podcast will be on YouTube if anybody is wanting to know. TikTok right now does not want any of you guys to care about that. It, let's look at this. There are four people in this live right now. This is the type of thing that happens when you're trying to expand outside of TikTok. They, they, they don't like you saying stuff like that. They don't like you doing stuff like that. They don't want this type of content out there. So this is why, this is a great example right here, four people watching this. This is the reason why I'm making the podcast and I'm trying to get off of TikTok. This is the reason. Because I feel like YouTube is really going to open some doors. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to put all this content together. Um, and I'm able, you know, I'm going to be able to really put it out the way I want to. And even though I'm going to struggle on YouTube, it's going to take me a long time to get, my, get myself going on that app. Um, I know for a fact that I'm, I, I can do it. There are other people right now with worse content on YouTube. I know for a fact that I can come, go on YouTube, and really blow this thing out the water. So I appreciate the five people that are here right now on TikTok. I appreciate the one person in chat on Twitch because this type of thing is what you have to learn as a creative, as an individual. What you learn is that even though I have 800,000 followers on TikTok, those followers don't mean anything if there isn't real interest in the content if there isn't people here who are supporting and really watching and trying to get involved it doesn't matter and this is why i think youtube is a better place for my content because on youtube i could put this on youtube and i'll have the same people coming and watching it i'll have the same people engaging the same people the same few thousand the same ten thousand twenty thousand here on tiktok they won't let you do that and this is just a side tangent right because i you know talking about tiktok is important Talking about TikTok, thank you so much, Queen Snuggles. I follow you on all three. Thank you so much. Talking about TikTok is important is because I live on this. I mean, this is where my opportunity started. So taking a tangent from some of the theories, like, and just lifting up the hood so you guys get to know who I am as well. Um, I was on TikTok for a long, long time. And I started on TikTok in 2020. And they, what they did back then is they basically were handing out followers. Basically, anytime people saw you, they engaged with you. They saw what you were doing. You got followers and followers and followers. And it actually opened a lot of doors for me, right? TikTok opened a lot of doors for me personally. I now work in television because of TikTok. 
all right? I have some of my biggest opportunities come from having a platform and being seen. You know what I mean? Like, I've had articles written about me. These are things that were awesome and they really felt great. But the thing about TikTok is when they give you all of those followers and they give you all of these views, they make you think that you're that you have more of a following than you actually do. There's a difference between the big number following and the amount of people that actually engage with who you are, right? So Queen Snuggles here, she's on my Twitch. She's a real follower. She's a real supporter, right? She's following on all three platforms. Like, that's huge. And that means a lot. And that is the type of, of follower that I really want. That's the type of support that every creator needs. Is the type of supporter who's willing to be there everywhere. And TikTok does not provide that. A great example. And, and, I, and I mean this because I love you guys. Every one of you that's in TikTok right now, thank you so much for being here. But this is the honest truth. I have 800,000 followers on, Twi on TikTok. 800,000 followers. And only six people are, or seven people are in my live right now. What does that say, right? And, and I made the same comment before, and I'm sure you guys have heard of it time and time again. But as a creator, what does that tell me? It tells me that TikTok is a waste of my time. It tells me that I'm not really gaining anything from TikTok if I put out a live and only a few people are here. What does that mean about my content? What does that mean about the relationship I have with my audience? Is there a relationship at all for all of these 800,000 people that were supposed to be present in a lot of my content? Queen Snuggle said, yeah, it's, so, it, it's a community base and TikTok is not that way. It's not. TikTok is just made for content. TikTok is a content farm. It's just designed to get you... Oh, got a follower. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, thank you so much for following my, my Twitch. Thank you so much. Um, I just got a new follower on Twitch. By the way, I'm on Twitch. So y'all follow me on there. When I started TikTok, I was hoping that, you know, the, the large audience that I got would actually make way for me. And it did. The number made way for me, right? But the problem is that the number, 800,000, that's all it was. It's just a number. And so at the end of the day, when it's just a number that's sitting in your face, but there's no real support coming behind that number, right? Like, again, I have five people in my live. I have one person in my chat on Twitch. Um, if I were more consistent, if I did all that stuff, sure, yes, I, I think it would be different. But with that being said, it makes it hard to be consistent when you see that those followers don't mean much of anything. What are your other platforms? Twitch, TikTok, and? Yeah, so I have Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube. So I'm song theory, you, listen, I'm song theory on every platform. Song theory on every single platform. Song theory on Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, everywhere. Thank you guys. Thank you for following those platforms because I'm trying to get off of TikTok, guys. Okay, every, almost every big TikToker you know is now developing a platform on YouTube. I promise you. Why is this? It's because we are realizing now that TikTok does not give us what we need, and that's community. Also, we don't get paid that much from TikTok. That's a whole other conversation. We don't get paid from TikTok. YouTube is the place to put content and get paid. Now, it takes longer to break into YouTube. It takes longer to get things started on YouTube. But it's still important to like sit down and recognize that YouTube is like the creator capital of the internet. YouTube is the center of it all when it comes to that. It's just the truth. So although I love TikTok, although I love uh, some of what TikTok offers me, like I said, I've gotten a lot of great opportunities from TikTok. I've gotten a lot of great um, people that I know, right? A lot of friends. But unfortunately, it's just inconsistent. At least on YouTube, I can consistently rely on only having 10 viewers. You know what I mean? I can consistently rely on only having 100, 300, 500 viewers. I can rely on that consistently. 
Because those 50 or 100 or 200 or 300 people are actually fans of my content and actually care about what I'm doing. Actually. Someone said you could try and do something for Christmas with MatPat. I wish. Listen, me trying to get in with MatPat is just, you could forget about that. I have messaged him on every single platform I could think of, and uh, it, it ain't working. Queen Snuggle said, oh, did your wife ever add uh, Pac-Man light to the Amazon storefront? Um, yeah, I believe she did. Uh, we'll have to check the Amazon storefront link. I believe she did add it on there. Um, I'll ask her and make sure. Um, YouTube is a fantastic platform. It really is. But it takes a lot longer to break into it. It just does. Right? Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the live. I'm just, we're ta- I'm on a podcast. I'm doing a podcast right now. I'm doing a song theory podcast. And we're having a lot of fun. If you want to actually watch this podcast back, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash song theory. Uh, song theory. Just look up Song Theory on YouTube, subscribe, and this podcast will be out. Uh, I'm putting it out tonight, actually, or tomorrow. I think I'm going to put it out tomorrow. I got to edit it a little bit and stuff like that. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. I just want to talk about that real quick. I wanted to lift up the hood for you guys. I wanted to show you. See, this is why it's fun being connected to a creator like this. Because you get to learn more about me. I can't talk like this on TikTok. I can't talk like this on other platforms uh, like TikTok, uh, the short form stuff, because it's too short. I can't, I can't be candid with you guys. So this is why I'm excited to do the podcast, because now I could be a little bit more candid. And I'm looking to have interviews and, and stuff like that. It's going to be really cool. Now, this, all this that I just said is probably going to be cut out the, the podcast. I'm going to let y'all know that right now. All of this extra stuff is probably going to be cut out the podcast, but... I just wanted to put that in there to let you guys know that watching the live like you're doing right now is important because you get to get insight like this. Hold on. Let me change my camera real quick. It keeps doing this thing where it's like in and out. Let me change. What if I change it? Will it matter? Hold on real quick. Uh, what if I... Uh, no, go back. Wait. Okay. Okay. Uh, autofocus. And let's do manual focus. Okay, boom. We're on manual focus now. You know, I was doing auto focus and I thought I was having fun with it, but uh, actually, um, manual focus feels better to me. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's much better. That's much better. Ooh, I look good. Sorry, again, if you guys are on TikTok, I'm actually on Twitch as well. And I'm, do- I'm filming a podcast right now. That's what's going on. Uh, someone said, by the way, whatever happened to your tooth? I will never tell you. I won't tell you only because that is the biggest conspiracy of this channel is what happened to my tooth. That question has been asked for so many years and I will, I will just let y'all hang on that one. I'll let you hang on that one. Maybe one day I'll tell you, but not now. It's the, it's the biggest conspiracy. I got to let it, I got to let it ruminate, right? I got to let it, uh, I got to let people get so injured. They got to know. And I'm just not going to say it. Santa broke it. Yeah, Santa broke it. Santa Claus broke it. <laughs> That's what it was. Okay, here we go. All right, so back on track. We're talking about more uh, lyrics. We're talking about lyrics from uh, Christmas songs. Okay? That's what we're doing right now. So right now we're talking about uh, walking in a winter wonderland. If you guys, well, the lyrics is Winter Wonderland, Walking Winter Wonderland. This is, this song is really like, ter- it makes, it hurts my heart. Like when I learned about it, it actually made a lot of sense. And of course it's a theory, but it's something to think about, right? So is this Christmas song the saddest Christmas song of all time? This theory says yes. When I listen to Walking in a Winter Wonderland, uh, I thought it was beautiful. It's kind of haunting. It, it makes you feel a certain way. But then when I read the history of the song and the potential theory that was surrounding it, it made me realize that this song is actually really sad, right? So like some of the lyrics, sleigh bell ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening, a beautiful sight. We're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. You know, um, later on we'll conspire as we dream by the fire. 
to face unafraid uh, the plans we've made walking in a winter wonderland. Now, this song, obviously, you guys have heard a million times, but there was something interesting about that line. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire to face unafraid the plans that we've made. I thought to myself that sounded really haunting. There was something really sad about that particular line. And something you'll learn about Christmas songs in general is that a lot of Christmas songs are just straight up sad. A lot of them are. But this one in particular, I thought, was, um, was, was really interesting. So watch this. When you look up Winter Wonderland, there is this uh, little synopsis that comes up. And, and I wanted to read it because I thought, I thought it, it would be interesting, okay? So let me make sure everyone can see it. Okay, cool. All right, so here's the synopsis, all right? Walking in a winter wonderland proceeds with caution. This one is actually kind of a bummer. Long story short, the song was written by a guy named Richard B. Smith in 1934 during the height of the Great Depression. While Smith was in a sanitarium dying from a case of tuberculosis that would claim his life in the following year, uh, the eponymous, the what what is that word? The eponymous? If, well, I'll just say that. The eponymous Winter Wonderland is a dream world that he desperately wanted to escape with his beloved wife, Jean, whom he married one year before getting diagnosed with his terrible illness. Wow. So basically, Walking in a Winter Wonderland was written by a guy who was sick with tuberculosis. The theory is that he wrote the song as some type of dream, like an illusion that he got to walk outside. A lot of people don't realize this, but having tuberculosis back in those days, even now, you have to quarantine with TB, right? And quarantining can be weeks at a time. Weeks at a time, you're quarantining. You can't leave the house. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere, right? It's it's actually really sad. And so to imagine that this guy sat down and he wrote a song dedicated to his wife, imagining what it would be like to finally step outside of the hospital room, to finally get out of quarantine, to finally be free and allowed to just live his life is really, really sad. Because at the end of the day, after writing the song and after releasing it, he actually died without ever leaving the hospital. He died without ever leaving his room. Because again, he had tuberculosis all the way up until the point of his death. Which, which I think is, is really sad. I mean, I mean, if you think about the, the song Walking in a Winter Wonderland, there's actually a lot of sad songs that sound like this song, right? Uh, the, you know, A Blue Christmas. There's a blue Christmas without you. Like, a lot of people don't realize just how sad a lot of these songs are. And I, I think it's about time that we began to uh, do more research on that, right? Christmas time is sad for a lot of people. It's a sad holiday and, 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 and people don't feel great. But I feel like this story in particular is interesting and it really connects the dots and humanizes the Christmas experience for people. I think it really brings us together and helps us realize that Christmas is not a happy holiday for everybody. Now, this theory, again, we don't know if it's true or not, but if it is true, that has to be one of the saddest Christmas songs ever that I've ever heard. And that's super sad. Okay. It just is. Now, I think real quick, I, I wanted to talk to um, about rappers real quick. All right. On, on our roster, on our list of things to talk about was uh, why rappers are dying. And there's this really interesting theory that came about that I thought was really cool. And I want to talk about it real quick. It's called the infinite artist theory. The infinite artist theory is effectively when you become an artist, when you become a rapper specifically, you are signing a contract that allows the record label to use your image, your songs, your voice forever. That's right, forever. And if you sign this contract, you are basically binding that even if you die at an early age, an untimely death, that the record label gets to use your voice, your face, your music, everything forever. Now, a lot of people will listen to this and go, I wouldn't want to do that. Well, don't judge too quickly because the honest truth is a lot of people do it because they offer a lot of money. Yeah, they offer a whole lot of money for that. Millions and millions of dollars to sign a piece of paper saying that we can use your face and your voice forever and ever and ever. 
And so talking about the infinite artist uh, theory, I wanted to talk about people like Juice World, right? Who you guys all know, died untimely, right? Of a drug overdose. And even after doing that unreleased music, you know, stuff coming out the vault, they have this guy doing music with other artists. He's dead. I don't know how that, I mean, I don't, I don't get the, the logistics behind that, but he's not the only rapper that's happened to, right? XXX Tentacion. They've done it to Tupac. They've done, and now, wait, and now they're doing it to Biggie. Yes, Biggie Smalls. They're doing it to him too. So I did some research on, on this subject and come to find out Biggie Smalls is actually about to be used by Meta. You know, Facebook, Meta, Facebook. And they're going to use his face, his likeness, a hyper-realistic avatar to create a concert in his memory. That has to be one of the creepiest things I've ever heard. If you didn't believe in the infinite artist theory, this is, this, this is it. This is the time to believe it. I want you guys to look at this article, okay? Look at this article. It says, Meta's notorious B.I.G. VR concert to feature hyper-realistic avatar of late rapper. 25 years after his death, he will be resurrected. Twenty-five years after his death, he will be resurrected. Like, ah, uh, uh, like listen to the way that sounds. It sounds like they're taking the T virus and and raising him from the dead so he could be a zombie. Like that sounds bad to resurrect Biggie Smalls for your concert. Somebody in the chat, Twitch said, doesn't Michael Jackson have around three thousand unreleased, unfinished songs? He does, and they're planning on releasing every single one of them. It's really sad the way they're doing that. And they're doing it to everybody. It's not just rappers, right? It's singers too, like Michael Jackson. 25 years after his death, they will be resurrecting uh, Biggie as a true-to-life hyper-realistic avatar and a virtual reality concert coming exclusively to Meta's VR and Facebook platforms. I don't know who could listen to that. I don't know who could listen to that and really think that's appealing. First of all, nobody wants to rock with Meta. I think we're all over Meta. Are we, can we all agree on that? I think we're all done with Meta. Okay, it failed, it swapped, it sucked, it's over. Meta is dead, Meta's dead, okay. But I think what's concerning me the most is now they're using a rapper who is dead. Why not use a rapper that's alive? Why not use a rapper that is currently like alive? Why not do that? Uh-oh, I'm having some issues with my computer. Hold on real quick. Ugh, what's going on? Okay, I don't know why my screen did that. Why not use a rapper that is currently living? Why not use a rapper that is actually acting right? Why, use 50 Cent. 50 Cent could use the, 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 the money, right? The baby, the baby right now can't even get more than 15 people at his concert. I have more people come to my recital as a five-year-old than I than than the baby is getting to come out to his concerts. The baby could use, you know, a VR concert to boost his sales. Why why are we using a man who's been dead for 25 years? Why? It's because they can. Now a lot of people will look at this and go, well, his estate probably approved it, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's not even about his estate approving it. Remember, Biggie Smalls was owned by a record label before he died. Biggie Smalls was part of a record label. So his death through contract doesn't matter. They can use him however they want. So somebody signed over the likeness, they signed over his face, they signed over his, 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 his everything so that they can use it for a virtual reality concert. It reminds me of when they did this with Tupac. Do, do y'all remember that? When they used Tupac in some type of weird like hologram thing at Lollapalooza or God dang, like whatever the frick it was. That's creepy. I don't know why, I, and this is me. I don't know why these record labels think that's something we even want to see. What makes you think I want to see a dead man come back to life and rapping in VR? I don't. 
And, and it continues to say, Meta's VR concert is billed as a celebration of Biggie's 50th birthday year. The Biggie Smalls Sky's the Limit VR concert experience, right? It's his birthday. You know, he died and so you want to celebrate it. This isn't the way to do it. I'm sorry. It's not the way to do it. I, this, this isn't. This is not it. Viola Wallace, Biggie mother's, uh, Biggie's mother, said in a statement, having the ability to create a, a variance of new opportunity to showcase my son Christopher's music through the advancement of technology is hard for me to grasp at times. Which, what she's saying is, I can't believe they're doing this. I didn't even know this is something you could do. That's what she said. I didn't even know this is possible. Like, that's, you know, creepy. That's what she's saying. This is creepy. Then she says, however, I found so much excitement in the process of developing his avatar, understanding the value added for fans to experience him in ways unattainable until now. Thank you all who have been contributing to the, and bringing the project to fruition. Blah, 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 blah. It's creepy. I respect his mother. I think she's probably a great person, but I think this is really, really creepy. And I hate the fact that people have been doing this to dead artists for all these years. I think, it's, I think it's time to like figure out another way to do this. I don't know. That's just me, right? That's just a theory, the eternal artist theory, where they get to use you forever and ever, and, and you can never rest. You can never rest. The argument also is that you'll never be forgotten, but most importantly, you'll never rest. And I think that alone is disturbing. That alone is disturbing, Okay. Yeah, Marilyn Monroe, a great example. Okay, and lastly, lastly, and I gotta go, guys. This is a lot of fun, but the podcast is coming to an end. Lastly, I wanted to talk about Kanye West. I wanted to, we need to talk about Kanye West. Because what, what, is, what is going on with, what is going on with Kanye West, bro? I, I don't know. <laughs> there's so much to talk about because there's actually a couple song theories that suggest that Kanye West predicted the future. Yeah, I know. Kanye West might have predicted the future. Now, what is one song that Kanye West might have used to predict the future? It's actually Gold Digger. We'll start there. That's right. So you all know that he recently got divorced by, by uh, Kim Kardashian. Like, they're over. Okay? And one thing that people thought was interesting about his Gold Digger song was a line that is, that's here actually, okay? So the line is 18 years, 18 years. She got one of your kids, got you for 18 years. I know somebody playing, paying child support for one of his kids. His baby mama car and crib is bigger than his. You will see him on TV any given Sunday, win the Super Bowl and drive off in a Hyundai. Now, what, what he was talking about in this song he was talking about like a, a football player, right? An NFL football player who loses their kid, loses uh, the divorce settlement, and, and is driving a smaller car, has a smaller house than his wife, blah, blah, blah. But people are starting to realize that this actually might be about him. If you look at what's been going on with him and Kim Kardashian, you recognize that there's a lot of similarities between this song and his current situation. It's actually a lot. A whole lot of similarities. And when you begin to realize that, you're like, oh my God, like this, that's kind of creepy. 18 years. Not only does Kim Kardashian have one of his kids, she got four of his kids. Four. And he lost the settlement. He's not doing so great. He's not doing so great. He's not actually looking up right now. And especially because he got canceled, he ain't got no more money. He's no longer a billionaire. He lost all of it because he got canceled. So now, just recently, they said that he has to pay upwards to $200,000 a month in child support. Oh, my God. That, that is, I mean, to me, right, a broke boy, that's a lot of money. $200,000 a month to Kim Kardashian, who is part of a billion dollar franchise family, who has a billion dollar clothing line skims, $200,000 a month in child support to a woman as rich as her? Wow. 
That, that's mind blowing, right? So he is the guy he was talking about in this song. It's him. He's now driving off in a Hyundai because he can't afford any of his bins. He can't afford a Lambo. Duke can hardly afford a barber. It's over for him. So people think that this song, somehow he was predicting his future, but that's not it. You also have uh, Flashing Lights. You guys ever heard the song Flashing Lights? It's actually kind of a good song. I like the song, right? Flashing Lights. And this one was hilarious. This one I thought was actually really, really funny. All right? So people were saying that, as you know, Kanye West had made some statements recently that are unsavory. And he's posted some pictures lately that are unsavory. And what basically adds up to him making a song called Flashing Lights. And in the lyrics, as you can see here, it says, and the weather's so breezy. Man, why can't life always be this easy? She's in the mirror dancing so sleazy. I call, I get a call like, where are you, Yeezy? And try to hit you with the Ula Wapti till I get flashed by the paparazzi. Dang, these niggas got me. I hate these niggas more than a Nazi. Dang, these niggas got me. I hate these niggas more than a Nazi. Does that seem awkward to anybody else? Like, I, this song in general, what, what we're looking at right now is the old Kanye. And we all miss the old Kanye. The old Kanye that used to hate racists. The old Kanye that said stuff like, George Bush hates black people. The old Kanye that used to wear t-shirts that said, I hate Nazis. We remember that Kanye, right? Well, now we're in a new Kanye era. We're in a Kanye era where he actually likes Nazis. We're in a Kanye era where he's actually like kind of cool with what Hitler's been doing. Kind of cool with the idea of who he is. I, I don't know what's going on with Kanye. I think Kanye West personally has a lot of mental issues. He has a lot of things going on. But I also do believe that Kanye West is officially canceled. Kanye West is officially canceled after saying this. After saying, I like Jitler, replace the J with an H. He said that out loud on video during an interview. And people don't believe it. People are actually fighting and saying he never said that. People are actually fighting and saying that Kanye West never said that. I would, I would, if, if I have the opportunity and this is going on YouTube, I'd play it again. Here it is again. It happened. All of you Kanye West fans, hear me now. Kanye West is officially canceled. If you still like Kanye West, then you also like Nazis. If you still like Kanye West, then you also like Jitler replaced the J with an H. You are a Nazi sympathizer if you like Kanye West, period. I don't really know another way to put that. You can't listen to the man say what he said and then act like, oh no, well, he made graduation. But he made my dark twisted, fan my dark twisted fantasy. But he did that stuff with Kid Cudi. But he made Donda, one and two. But, 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 but Kanye West, he, he made homecoming. But, 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 but shut up. Shut up. You, all of you have to realize that what Kanye West has done has destroyed his career forever. There is no coming back from where he is now. He is at the lowest point on the spectrum of fame and celebrity that you could possibly get. And all he said was a few words. That's all it takes. Now listen, your position on why or how, that's up to you. That's, that's totally up to you. But you can look at what has happened and you can say without a shadow of a doubt that that man is officially canceled. No more question, no more, no more answers, that's it, done. And quite frankly, I'm actually kind of glad. Ever since the old Kanye left, I've just been, I felt empty on the inside. So really, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta be honest, I'm kinda glad about this. Kinda glad. 
Kanye West is over. The party's over, guys. Pack it up. It's it's a wrap. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this stream. Thank you so much for being live here on TikTok, being live on Twitch. I'm about to go ahead and go. I really enjoyed this. I will, I will be posting a podcast every week, every single week. So please make sure you tune in. I want to make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I want to make sure you guys are aware that I am here making this content and also I'll be cutting up this content into shorter form pieces of content, obviously. Uh, this length was 56 minutes long, so I'll probably create about 10 minute long videos on YouTube so you can watch those. And also I'll be making some shorter form content for TikTok, for Instagram uh, Reels, and for YouTube Shorts. So that's, that's what I'm doing, guys. That's why I'm so excited, okay? I appreciate it once again. This is so exciting. I had a great time. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day, okay? I love you all. I hope you have a great day and a better tomorrow. God bless. Thank you for choosing the Song Theory Podcast. And I'll see you all later. Peace. Bye-bye.